Do you like fighters or spacecraft design? Grab your copy of the first Space Dock reference book all about these topics on our Patreon through the link in the description and pinned comment below. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujuana and today we are taking a little look at the status of droids in Star Wars. Because, well, it's a bit weird, isn't it? I've been wanting to talk about this for a while now, but with the sixth episode of season three of The Mandalorian, which there will be spoilers from, now seems like the optimal time. In that episode, Bo, Din and Grogu visit Plazir 15 to re-recruit the Mandalorians protecting it as mercenaries. The society on Plazir is an idyllic direct democracy with an aesthetic that resembles the perfect future meme, and its inhabitants are essentially free from needing to do labour. This is because the reformed Captain Bombardier used reprogrammed old droids from the Empire and even the Clone Wars to do this work, leaving the people free to do whatever they wanted. Essentially, the old reprogrammed droids became an underclass, albeit one that was saved from being scrapped elsewhere and instead given purpose. However, some of the droids were acting out and malfunctioning, and for a little while it seems like the episode was going towards some sort of secret droid uprising, as they broke out of their programming after many years or even decades of service. But no, this was not the case, and the droids were instead fine with being an underclass who did all the work and got none of the benefits. Sure, the other option was destruction, but they were also programmed to have this attitude. This is all exceptionally weird if you give it any thought because of the inconsistent way the droids were portrayed in this episode. On one hand, they were programmed and even had a kill switch built into them, and were being used for easily automated work. On the other, they had personalities, acted with emotion, and even had a place to socialise. Are they mere robots or fully sentient beings? And this, this is the heart of why droids in Star Wars are so very odd. Sometimes they're just tools, like this poor dude who's just a gurney, and other times they're full-on sentient beings. There's this whole layered tier system of cognitive capabilities, but it's often very messy and has a lot of crossover, which leads to every single type of droid all lumped together as simple robots, no matter how close to personhood they might be. This has been the status quo since the very beginning 46 years ago, with the Jawas and R2 and 3PO and all that. Those two, more than any other droids, are essentially people, and what happens to them? Captured and sold for profit, with restraining bolts attached. Am I the only one who is made uncomfortable by these things? If droids on the whole were more robotic, then sure, you'd have a safety device on them as like an emergency shutdown, as you would for any other industrial machine. But for sentient beings? These have some uncomfortable connotations, and they often go hand in hand with memory wipes and reprogramming as well, which just further makes it all a lot darker than it was probably intended to be. But there is at least some in-universe justification for all this, and the general anti-droid sentiments that seemed to exist during that time period, such as the Cantina in Mos Eisley, and in more modern Star Wars characters like Din Djarin. This is of course the massive droid armies of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, which clearly left their mark on the peoples of the galaxy. But does that justify the continued use of potentially sentient beings as slaves, with no one really caring? Well, that's not a fair question to pose, because there are characters who care, such as L337 in Solo. She is one of the rare times the franchise has actually acknowledged any of these things, and most of the time that attitude was played off as a joke, and other characters rolled their eyes at her. Then she basically died and got integrated into the Falcon. During a brief moment of actual rebellion, L3 did manage to inspire Ali, who gets a whole paragraph of story all to herself in the Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary after being in the background of that film like once. Wow, amazing! I think we can all agree that slavery is bad, and the sort of lackadaisical way droid slavery is portrayed in Star Wars is just unimaginative. I will admit, it is uncomfortable to think about something like this, and to consider that some of our favourite stories have had this in the whole time without really going into it that much. Which is why this episode of Mando stood out to me, not because I was expecting it to really engage with the topic, but because, yet again, the topic was dodged. They didn't even go near it, just showed the weird side of things and then left it alone. 
and why? There's plenty of opportunity across the enormous breadth of the setting for stories about droid rights, and for Star Wars to once again acknowledge the peculiar standing of droids and their treatment by the flesh and blood beings of the galaxy. It doesn't have to wipe out the existing lore of the setting, just expand upon the seeds that are already there, recognise that yes, many droids are sentient and they are being exploited. Perhaps Season 2 of Andor will touch on this, as it's likely that the origin story and growth of K2SO will be shown, which will suit the anti-fascist themes of that show down to a T. In the end, I just think Star Wars can do better than it has done in regards to its droid characters. Other franchises have amazing robotic characters and storylines, so why shouldn't Star Wars give it a go, outside of the odd goofy side story or the novels and comics? Bigger, more mainstream storytelling about droids, and their place in galactic society feels like huge amounts of territory waiting to be explored. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our Space Fighter design reference book. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by giving us super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.